Before we actually get down to our first speaker, I also want to do something very important, which is to thank our conference sponsors. This conference is a big deal, and we couldn't have a big deal without some generous sponsors who really support the work that we're doing and understand that it's really important to be able to bring this information to you. So I'd like to thank our project sponsor, Ardent Mills, our event sponsors, Bob's Red Mill, King Arthur Flour, and Arnold Brownberry Oro Wheat Bread from Bimbo, our benefactor sponsors, Bay State Milling, Crunchmaster TH Foods, Dunkin' Donuts, Flower Foods, Nature Zone, Frito-Lay and Quaker, General Mills, Grain Millers, International Pasta Organization, Lundberg Family Farms, Mars Uncle Ben's, Riviana, and Weedabix Barbers, and our supporters, To Your Health Sprouted Flower, Mestamarker, Carl Brandt, and Home Free. They all have tables here. They want to tell you about their products out here in the lobby. And there's a few more that are in the uh, adjacent room, as you'll see, because we'll have breakfast and lunch in there. Don't miss them either, because they've got stories that they want to tell you. So a big thanks, please, to all of our sponsors for making this conference possible. Now, assuming everybody has their cell phones muted at this point, we are ready to go. I would like to introduce Sarah Bear Sinnott. Sarah has been president of Old Ways for two decades, and she's been with Old Ways for two decades. She's been president since 2010. Um, I'm giving her even more credit than she deserves, and she deserves a lot. Um, before coming to Old Ways, Sarah earned her master's in regional planning and worked at Inc. Magazine as a special projects editor. And she is definitely passionate about health through heritage and traditional diets. And she is going to make some opening remarks to you tonight. Sarah? Thank you very much, Cynthia. And good afternoon. And welcome to Boston and the seventh Whole Grains Conference. The first Whole Grains Conference was 10 years ago this very week. The Whole Grains Council was much smaller then. It started in 2003 with seven of us in a conference room in Chicago on a hot summer day. There are a couple of people here, Kent and Dennis, I know you were there with us in July then. And when we started planning the first conference, the 2004 conference, the first chair said to me, Mike Orlando from Sunnyland Mills, he said, do you think we can really do this? I said, yes, we can, and we have, with the support and the participation of many of you here, and I thank you for that. The names um, of the conferences over the years are interesting and instructive because they show the progress that we've made, the barriers that have been, um, been knocked down. In 2004, in New Orleans, we were doing Whole Grains Goes Mainstream. Two years later, in Orlando, getting to three. Then in Kansas City, just ask for whole grains. You may have a button, just ask for whole grains. Then two years later in Alexandria, make at least half your grains whole, which is a phrase we all know from the dietary guidelines. In 2011 in Portland, we were talking about whole grains, the new norm. And then last conference in San Antonio, whole grains on every plate. And now in Boston, we are breaking barriers. The Whole Grains Council is perhaps the best known of Old Way's eight major programs. And one reason is that the, is that the Whole Grains Council um, is such a good fit for the overall mission, philosophy, and worldview of Old Ways. Um, we have three parts of our um, worldview philosophy. The first is health through heritage. It's our tagline. Um, the culinary past has lots of important lessons. Um, we don't want to lose them. We say, let the old ways be your guide to good health and well-being. And what we try to do is figure out how to adapt them to the realities of the modern world. Um, this um, is a, an illustration from Puglia. This is the famous bread of Altamora in Puglia. Whole grains are historic approach to, to grains, and that's why they fit so well with old ways. The second tenant is the pleasures of the table. Dun Gifford, the founder of old ways, always used to say we 
We don't eat nutrition, we eat food. And in IFIC's most recent survey, more than 75% of the respondents strongly agreed or uh, very much agreed that they want to talk about what they should be eating rather than be told what they shouldn't eat. And certainly whole grains are delicious and a part of this message of what to eat, and so they fit with old ways. And then last, the third, is solid proven science. Old Ways um, has a track record of beating back pseudoscience for two decades, starting with the no-fat craze of the 90s. And certainly there are plenty of health benefits of whole grains that have been proven again and again, study after study. When we introduced the Mediterranean diet pyramid in 1993 with whole grains at the base of the pyramid, um, it was a time of no fat, low fat, lots of low fat foods out in the market, and dietary guidance was low fat. And we um, talked about olive oil, a healthy fat, and that's part of our track record. And there's solid science behind whole, the benefits of whole grains, so it fits just like the Mediterranean diet and olive oil. They fit our worldview. But looking back, why did we ever give up the heritage of whole grains? What, what happened? So historically, um, farmers grew, grew grains, and they were harvested, and they were threshed. And there was a lots of stuff. There's bugs, dirts, rocks, along with all the, uh, the grains. And only the rich people, only the king, could afford to have all the, uh, the, uh, the junk sifted out. And so white flour became special. But was the king really so healthy? And there's also confusion about what needed to be removed from the grain itself. Food historian Rachel Loudon notes, eating whole grains was regarded a bit as we might regard eating oysters. We have to shell it to get at the real briny, delicious oyster. Our ancestors thought about grains the same way. They had to be processed to get rid of the husks, the hulls, and the brands to get at the pure white inside. The outside parts, like oyster shells, were impossible to chew, caught in the throat, and weren't natural and not healthful either. People also noticed that white flour lasted longer and that it baked in a much more airy, lighter, fluffier way. And there was no obvious downside to favoring white flour. And then it became affordable for everybody. Roller mills made it easy and inexpensive for everyone to eat like a king. And then transportation improvements with trains made far off mills competitive with local ones and made shelf life even more important. So let's look at the score. What's the score for white flour? It's longer shelf life. It's easier to bake with. No weird dark stuff. And you could eat like a king. So the score, four for refined grain, none for whole wheat, whole grain. But nutrition science came to the rescue. Uh, Thomas Tryon was uh, way ahead of his time, three, more than 300 years ago. And this statement is very much like make your, half your grains whole, which we know so well now. And then more nutrition science emerged in the middle of the 1800s, the necessity of brown bread for digestion. And then Dr. Weston Price in the, in the late 1930s. And then in the 70s, Dennis Burkett's research in Africa on the benefits of fiber, whole grains, and other whole foods. And then fiber became a part of uh, nutrition advice in the late 70s. And then more research um, started appearing. And in the late um, 90s, um, some leading uh, researchers, particularly from the University of Minnesota, Joanne Slavin, David Jacobs, and Len Marquardt started doing nutrition reviews of the health benefits of whole grains. So let's look at the barriers we've broken down. We know that um, 
the downside nutritionally to throwing out the healthiest part of grains, and nutrition science supports the healthfulness of whole grains. So that's one barrier broken. Over the last decade, nutrition policy now includes whole grains, make half your grains whole. Restaurants and manufacturers have spent lots of money and time making whole grains delicious. We're going to be enjoying some um, throughout this conference, and we're going to be hearing from some chefs and a food writer this afternoon as well. And consumer attitudes. Consumers are embracing whole grains much more than they had before, and we'll be hearing from June Jo Lee from the Hartman Group more about this later this, this afternoon. And so this week, we'll be celebrating all the barriers that, we've been broken, that we have broken down and looking at fad diets and misinformation, the big barrier to be broken down um, right now. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now. And we'll be doing this week, this week through great speakers, through a committee audience like all of you out there, the wonderful program book that Cynthia just described. And we have over 30 journalists here who are ready to go out and take the word back. So um, as we um, set forth on this uh, three days of breaking barriers, I hope you'll join with all of us, listen very carefully to all of our speakers, and then go forth and take the good word, um, breaking barriers of misinformation. And before I introduce the next speaker, I want to thank all of you very much for coming and being here with us, to thank our speakers and sponsors and um, all the Whole Grains Council members for making this conference possible. And I'd like to thank the Old Way staff, particularly those who are working most closely with Whole Grains. And I'd ask you to stand if you're here, I hope. Um, Mallory Cushman, still at the registration desk. <laughs> and I bet Kelly is still there, too. And Harley. Um, we have. We'll introduce you to them later. Um, Kyle Potvin, one of our media team, is in the back here. And uh, Rachel Greenstein as well. And then most especially, um, Cynthia Harriman, our Director of Food and Nutrition Strategies. If you're sitting here, I'm sure you have learned the skill and expertise of Cynthia. And um, I can say that I'm very glad that you've been a part of Old Ways and the Whole Grains Council for more than 10 years. Thank you very much.